Right, next episode. Let's get straight into it. So, although the build frame is really good to start off with, it doesn't really help us get underneath and around and get access to everywhere. So, what do we need? We need a car rotisserie. Considered buying one, but we were working on a budget, so I thought I'd make one. Looked at quite a few options, and what I've settled on is not going to be the most complex, but it's also not going to be the simplest. It's somewhere in between. It's going to give us some height adjustment, and there's going to be some balance point adjustment. That should allow me to easily turn this thing around uh, with a little effort. So the aim is to build one a lot cheaper. In fact, stick around for the end and we'll go through exactly what's involved in building this. Costs, time, was it worth it? So here we go with a marathon of drilling holes. Thought we'd count them. I'll tell you what. It took way too long to put this video together counting them, but anyway, we did it anyway. Every hole has to be drilled three times. Pilot hole, intermediate hole, and then I think it's a 10 or 12 mil drill bit. So every single hole drilled three times. Um, so you want to guess on how many holes we do? Well, keep watching. You'll find out. And all the drilled holes basically enable us to be able to adjust the rotisserie for height, as I said, and also the balance point, so when we turn it over. So these first square sections that I'm drilling out, these are for the balance point. Be able to adjust the tipping point by screwing these sections in and out, and then we can lock them in place by the holes. Still trying to work it out here exactly how I want it. So basically, I'm going to put an anchor point at the bottom that has two nuts inside. And we weld it together, weld it to the rod, but they'll be free to move inside the little bit of box section, and that will push the outer box section up and down on the inner section to be able to give us that adjustment. Yep, yeah, you thought we'd finish with the holes? Not quite, more to go. There's actually four holes that I didn't count here, but if I didn't drill them on camera, they didn't happen, so they're not in the count. So 
so the screw rods fit through and allow to move freely which is what we want and then just part these two sections off as we go we put one nut inside and a second nut just to stop the movement of the rod and then we'll weld these to the bottom sections weld another nut to the top so it screws in and out and then weld another one on the end so we can use a gun even to uh, to wind it in and out. I think the welding is getting a little bit better but it is easy to weld two and three mil steel than it is to weld the one mil body steel but anyway it's all practice so as you can see I've already made one and this is me filming the second one I usually find it easier not to film the first work it all out and when I know more of what I'm doing film the second one So this nut's welded to the longer inner section and that's what it screws in and out on. So back to the frame. And let's get these welded together. I did ask myself while putting this together whether it needed to be that accurately level and upright but I suppose there's no harm in getting it right as well as can be We've got some casters on. I think these are about 150 kilograms each. So, six of them should be enough. But clearly, we're first going to test it with some fat old bloke jumping on it. And there you go, didn't break. There is strengthening going to be on there though, and here we are cutting it. Notice in the background, sprayed red. Everything at the minute is in primer or blue steel, so I thought we'd give something a bit of colour. Painting sections first before they go together, just so they're a bit easier to paint and you can get into the difficult places. It's not meant to be showroom quality you never know might be a hint to what color the car might be so this is another two sections of box section one inner and one outer a little bit beefy in the last ones and these are going to be the main uprights so this is how we set the height so we can lift the car up and down now i thought about provision for a built-in jack but I'm not going to, I'm just going to use uh, the car jack if I need to lift it up and down. I don't see me or adjusting it much, but there is the capability to do so if I want to. Now 
Now as you see I am being as careful as I can with these holes because the inner and outer holes have also got to line up so basically two sections two holes each so that's four holes that's got to line up and I don't want to make them too big and sloppy so it's all over the place I want to be quite quite a tight fit so I need to be as accurate as possible these holes So how many did you guess? Up to 240. And I think that'll be it. But maybe not. These holes are a little bit tight, especially when I've painted them. So I may drill them out another mil or two mil. We'll see how we go. Right, onto the pipe. Obviously we need a pivot mechanism. So here I measured two lengths out because I wasn't quite sure on how long I wanted it to be so just did it to visualize I think they needed to be a bit longer so we cut it to the longer line that's the inner section done they are, I think it's three mil pipe, 40 mil diameter. This is three and a half, no, four and a half mil outer pipe, 50 diameter. And they're a pretty good fit. As you can see, I've done a bit more spraying again. Easier to do now than I think on it. Although you ought to see the state of my floor. It's covered in, in red paint. Anyway, back onto some welding. Again find the big thick stuff much easier I'm sure everybody does doesn't look bad though I think it's pretty critical that these are actually um, square and level I want the pivot point to be um, as accurate as possible so it doesn't slop all over the place that'll not be a good outcome So now welding the strength in the zone. So you can see the underside are all painted. I've just got to paint the uh, the top side. So yeah, another little mini marathon of welding. This is two mil to three mil. So again, not too bad, not too taxing. So I'm now attaching the inner pipe, the smaller pipe, to the uh, adjustment sections. Again, need to be as square as possible. Don't want it wobbling and going all over the place. And by this time, the old welding sunburn had started, so I put my safety welding top on. As you can see, it's really thick. So a little bit of a test there of the inner and outer pivot points seem to fit pretty well 
And on the bottom of the adjustment, this bar basically will be one that will go across the front and the back of the car. Um, and then I'll fashion up or fabricate some pickup points to the underside of the car, back onto the subframe mountings. So all the main fabrication, almost done. After plenty cutting, plenty welding, this is how we look. Now these outer sections really didn't fit very well over the inner, so I did have to put weld some spacers in, and now they're pretty tight. There's very little movement in them. These holes are pretty tight as well. Uh, still not made my mind up whether I'm going to drill them out or not because I'm not going to be moving them very much. The advantage of them being pretty tight at the minute is it's not going to wobble all over the place. So, happy with that. outer you can see that goes um, you can raise up and down and the inner bit that pivots there that also has got an adjustment and that's what gives us the adjustment of the balance point so we'll just check the second one as well as I say pretty good fit over the top that sleeve and fairly tight fitment on these pins that go in. So fairly we're happy with that. But hey, we've yet to see how it works. If it works, can you imagine it falling off straight away? That'd be fucking charming, wouldn't it? But we'll see. Still a little bit to do on here though. Uh, I'm gonna put some more bracing points on the lower arms, the lower balance arms, and obviously we've got to fashion and fabricate up the um, the mountings to the car, but basically, that's the main of it done. As you can see, both of these adjustment arms are adjusted differently. So you can see the one behind uh, naturally sits at the bottom, and now tip this over if you watch. The balance point is such that this one sits upside down. So you can see that depending on where these screwed rods are in and out, it does indeed change where they sit. I'll finish off spraying it all and making it all tidy um, once I've fashioned the, the bottom sections to hold the car. Uh, also, as I said, I've got to uh, drill through the, the round plate to give us the uh, anchoring points.
people. Was it worth it? Well, here are the numbers. Bear in mind, I said the cheapest one that I could find. It still looked decent quality. It was fifteen hundred dollars. How much has this cost me? A couple of sections of eight meter box for the frame. Shorter one for the bracing. Another section box, and then two sections of pipe for the pivot. And then there was the screwed rod and a few uh, nuts and bits and pieces. So, 423, significantly cheaper. But how much work? Well, 240 holes that you've seen. How long did it take to build? No idea, didn't count. Raw video though, 13 hours. But the killer, almost as long to edit this YouTube video. So is it worth it? You decide. Anyway, we're almost there. Nearly finished. Cheers.